What's going on you glorious sim racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here and today I wanted to talk about Fanatic, however you want to pronounce it. Thomas doesn't care either way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's talk about Fanatic and the DD series the wheels that have come out and and, uh, and for those that didn't get them, uh, you know, leave some comments below and let us know what your uh, scenario is. Were you able to cancel it and are, are you just patiently waiting or, or whatnot? But, you know, I'm gonna cover some topics real quickly over this, not to drag it on too long, but just give you some insight <clears throat> as an affiliate of uh, a Fanatic, that is. Uh, and, you know, by all means, I'm not a high seller for Fanatic, um, hardly anymore, because I really don't um, push the product uh, too much, uh, especially around the, um, the Black Friday sales uh, days, even though you can make a decent commission, but um, it's, uh, I always know it's gonna be late. So. <laughs> So I don't, I don't really promote it that much as far as that goes. So uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll cover topics like, uh, let's see, affiliate marketing, just give you some ins and outs of affiliate marketing for say in sim racing, for, for instance, pre-orders, Black Friday sales, um, the DD series and GT7 wheels to get uh, as alternatives to, to this DD7. So let's get into it. First things first, affiliate marketing, what is it? Let's just explain it real quick. This is what affiliate marketing is. is I'll give you or some YouTuber or any person, maybe you getting into affiliate marketing, uh, you will um, reach out to these companies. Companies towards the end of their uh, website page will have an uh, offer for affiliate marketing. So you'll go click on that. You fill out the, uh, the paper, online paperwork, and bam, you're an affiliate marketer. Really not much of any requirement to become an affiliate marketer. Uh, now where the advantages come is if you have a very popular channel, you'll have people reach out to you, bigger companies say like Logitech, which don't really make it so easy to become an affiliate marketer for. Uh, they have ambassadors basically <laughs> is what they have on their site, which is usually like uh, real life race car drivers and, and such like that. But uh, or someone that has a high traffic uh, website or high traffic uh, YouTube channel. So, uh, because they're going to maximize their their potential, right? Uh, if you're someone that has um, a million followers, then if I'm a company, I would love to get my product to you in 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 the face of say a million people. That's a great investment to give a product away to someone that may cost you as a company. 500 bucks, but you sell it for $1,500, right? Great investment. And it's, it's advertising investment anyways, capital expense, not a big deal uh, to these companies. But if you're a small company, uh, just growing, then yeah, it's, it's a little bit harder for them to do that. But that's the gist of it, right? So <clears throat> you end up going out and to various companies and you uh, obtain an affiliate link from these companies and set up your accounts on each one. Uh, for instance, uh, here's my link tree page here. And so I have several of them. I have Asetek, Moza, Fanatic, Simlabs, uh, Apex, Track Racer, GSTP Racing, which is a product I reviewed on, on the site here, Sim Gadget, Gadget, I mean, Digital Motorsports, and Amazon. Amazon's just a journal link. But uh, all of these, if you click on one and you buy something within 30 days, uh, a purchase happens, I'll get a commission for that, right? And uh, the commission can range, it depends on how popular you are, how much inf influence you have, which means basically how many people you have on your channel. So if you're someone with 50,000 or 300,000 subscribers, you're gonna uh, potentially earn a lot more, just even if you have a lower percentage rate of return, right? Your uh, RTI, your return on investment. Um, but the bigger you are, the more percentage you generally get is what I see. So there's some different packages for each one uh, that offers. Uh, if you do X amount of uh, sales and volume, then they'll give you products at a, at a discount to buy to do a uh, to do a review on if you're going to be using them for review purposes. Uh, others, they just give you products for review. And, uh, you know, everybody says, well, they're not expecting a review from me. They're expecting a review from you. They don't give you something for free. They're always expecting you to review something. So the natural occurrence of a, of a human, uh, as far as if you give me something, I feel obligated to give you something back in return. That's just human nature. So 
Companies know this, right? So they give you something. You're going to feel obligated to do something in return. Even if you didn't even want the product, you're like, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do a review on it. They still give it to you because you still feel that obligation to do something. So I'm not at that league yet, <laughs> but uh, uh, kudos to those who are. Uh, it's awesome because, you know, they're able to give product reviews on really expensive products. And if you follow people, uh, say like Boosted or, or Random Call Sign, they actually give you their honest review of the product, not just marketing blitz of it, then it's it's really good. Sim Racing Garage, another guy. Oh man, I love watching Sim Racing Garage. Uh, it just gives you the ins and outs of it and don't really care if you buy it or not. And that's kind of how I try to market uh, myself as well. I don't really care if you use my uh, links to buy something. I'm generally gonna buy it because I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely interested in that product that I would want to put on my rig and uh, and, and use and then give you my thoughts on it. So for instance, my AccuForce uh, will never got, they never offer affiliate marketing, right? But I've done tons of reviews on them. I've done tons of review on their SIM lab. Or I'm sorry, their, uh, what do they call it? The transducer setup that they have on their uh, SIM vibe and uh, gave a lot of tutorials and stuff on it and, and uh, never received a penny for that. It was just to help the people try to understand how to use the product, right? So I enjoy it. So if you enjoy it, it's, it comes natural to just want to help people, right? And that's payment enough in, in most cases, right? But yeah, I don't make a living at doing this. <laughs> I have a day job uh, as an engineer and um, very successful at that. But so I buy the products that I uh, am interested in and uh, do the reviews on it. Sometimes I receive something free like the Husenfeld Sprint pedals, I receive those for free, but I still give the ins and outs of it, pros and cons, and always will do so. Anyway, I digress. That's kind of affiliate marketing. Now, percentage-wise, like I said, depends on the company and depends on the individual, how much uh, influence that person may have. Uh, it, it ranges really from 2% up to 10%. I've hardly ever seen anybody get over 10%, but maybe they do, I don't know. But uh, most of them I've run across are between two, and two to 10%. Now keep in mind, for example, at <laughs> one time, uh, I was selling over 40K in Fanatic products a year for a couple years in a row. And I uh, was pushing it uh, pretty good because I was buying products myself and reviewing them and then finding the holes in it. And, and hell, actually, the mounting of the handbrake to the club sport shifter I came up with and then the following year they made they, they gave you some uh, t-nuts to do it yourself and so everybody kind of borrows from everybody right and I had tons of reviews you know, or, I'm sorry uh, views of these of these uh, findings that I did you know easy way to do things right mount your handbrake to your shifter to save space uh, uh, repair pedals you know how do you do that how do you install the kits on and on um, but I never got a product from them for free. Heck, it was hard enough just to, even when you reached out to them, you kind of get a product for free, whether they would respond to you or not was, was horrendous time. And then, uh, when they did, it's usually, well, you're not in our demographic and basically it didn't matter how much you sold. It's just that you don't have enough volume on your, on your channel to warrant us to give you a product to review. Right. So it goes off of really popularity is what it goes off of. So yeah, to each your own. But so if you're getting into affiliate marketing, that's something to keep in mind. You got to be very popular and, and influential. It's an influencing market. I mean, now on your taxes, there's a, a category for influencers, right? This used to not be that way uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> so uh, they're like, what are you doing for, for a side gig? Oh, I'm a... Uh, I'm a YouTuber. Well, what the hell is that, right? So uh, now they have a whole category, influencer, right? But anyway, I digress. That is basically what affiliate sales are. Now, let's get into um, what I was going to get into. Pre-orders. So, Fanatic pre-orders. If you are interested in it. So, if you were to click on one of my links here, like Fanatic right here, that's going to go to the Fanatic website. It's going to automatically go to the uh, Europe English version. That's just how my hot link is for it and uh, but if we click on this one you'll see they are open for pre-orders available date February 29th 2024 don't bet on it okay they have uh, lots of problems in sh shipping these products now even though they do say they have these setting in warehouses is what I saw so uh, there's an interview with Kirith uh, that met with Thomas which awesome interview if you get a chance you probably already saw it if you're interested in fanatic stuff but 
uh, Kirith, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I love his channel. And uh, he's a real race car driver, which is sweet. So he kind of carries a little bit more volume of, of uh, you tend to kind of believe what he's saying about, about force feedback and stuff like that because he actually drives the cars, right? Uh, so yeah, he's got 77K subscribers there. Awesome. So he's going to naturally get products to review for free, like as a Logitech uh, will that he got for free. I don't know if he got the Moser or not for free. I don't, I don't really keep in mind of that, but he, I know he mentions the Logitech he got for free. And uh, so he's a promoter of the Logitech as well, but, and he has affiliate sales with Logitech as well. So, which is, which is good for him. So, um, but yeah, he, he, he loves the Logitech one actually uh, quite a bit. So, but he, he had a great interview with, with Thomas here and uh, they kind of spilt the beans, you know, what's going on. So I encourage you to go watch that uh, video of it and he has a couple of them now out this was 10 days ago and the new one came out just uh two days ago so uh but watch them but basically what's happening is is their their emrp system doesn't uh wasn't communicating with the website like it's supposed to so basically the website said they had had 300 items in stock and the and the uh mrp system said we have 100 right for instance and uh so they they kept selling it kept allowing you to pre-order pre-order and pre-order until they met that that volume. Well, lo and behold, you only had a hundred, so you have 200 on back order. And so they didn't catch that, right? So that's a, that's an internal problem. It's a computer issue, uh, whether it's true or not, who knows, but it, it's pretty, pretty viable, uh, thing that can happen. Actually, I, I've seen MRP systems work in this MRP systems end up working fine, but it's this old added shit in shit out. So if someone doesn't record uh, what they actually have coming in in inventory correctly into the MRP system so they don't scan it in if they even have scanners uh, a company like this probably has scanners where they scan each barcode as it comes in and enters into the MRP system automatically older ones you know they don't, they don't have quite that setup but um, this is a manufacturing report uh, system is what it is but um, our ERP is another ver uh, word for it as well but yeah it's not communicating to the website correctly so they're kind of screwed so a, a bigger company like fanatic keep in mind fanatic is is in the ecosystem of, of sim racing and racing they support gt3 gt4 racing they're big they have to push a large volume of product to stay in business because their break-even amount is quite high for all the sponsorships that they have uh so the more you see somebody the more they're paying out that's advertising costs right so uh so they you know yeah they kind of a little screwed on their on their self here as far as uh, having to pay out money to uh, drop ship things quicker than uh, than they normally would have basically air freighting stuff in for instance instead of letting it go on the boat right which would be much cheaper but a longer process to get it to the states uh, for instance so yeah it's a uh, it's a conundrum for them <laughs> but uh, kudos to them uh, for for Thomas there to actually having an interview and talking about it and then spilling out his, his his issues and stuff so that was a great uh, interview but uh, also in the interview he had mentioned about <clears throat> had he had known he wouldn't have released the, the dd um, plus pre-order right along with the uh with the regular dd the club tour dd so club tour dd is is basically pc and xbox uh compatible and that plus is playstation and then you get an Xbox rim, any kind of Xbox rim, and then it makes it compatible for both. And obviously it works for PC as well. But he didn't want to delay the announcement of the DD Plus uh, to the viewers because they'd get pissed at, well, man, I would have, uh, the DD Plus, for instance, is 15 newton meters. The other one, the DD is 13 newton meters. So if you are a customer and you order the DD Plus, you're like, I don't really care about PlayStation compatibility. I'm fine with this. But there is a 15 newton meter one. I would like the option to know up front that I could have went that route as well instead of waiting a week or a day even to know that a DD plus version is in the in the scope of things right and so that's why he released it right but <laughs> just after this interview <clears throat> of, uh, with Kirith now comes the DD extreme <laughs> so there's some dishonesty there I think uh, so if that was the case then he would also announce in the beginning the dd extreme as well but you have to think it's a little bit complicated uh of a scenario because he couldn't announce this will because playstation wouldn't let him announce the will so that's a that's a complication on their part right so 
But I don't see, honestly, I don't see why uh, when you announce, say, the, the DD Plus here, uh, yeah, you announce the DD Plus, why you couldn't verbally say uh, that PlayStation Will is coming. You don't have to say it's produced by Polyphony. You don't have to say it's produced by XYZ. You can just say there's a Will coming. Stay tuned. That lets you the customer know that hmm maybe I want to wait a little bit because there's actually going to be a wheel that's coming as well should I just wait and see if there's going to be bumped as a package and then also then I would naturally think well maybe they're going to come out with pedals as well for this package maybe a a, a version of, of the uh, V2s or you know, it's going to be bundled into this package maybe a little bit fancier looking or something V2 uh, setup um, kind of like they did with the the regular Pro Wheel right uh, but yeah none of that so so they kind of uh needed to bite their tongue i think on that one so that didn't get readdressed but i, I think the the hate is warranted as far as you as a customer you you as a customer really don't care what their hell the problem is you just want your product you said it was going to deliver it this time you didn't do it what gives right uh that's a you problem not a me problem but so i get the the hate on them and uh but yeah this is get on on into it uh, further so in conclusion, for pre-orders and then covering the Curith interview, which is an awesome interview, go watch it. And also go watch Random Call Sign as far as the effects of this uh, DD Extreme and then uh, Boosted Media as well for their for their um, honesty that they're giving on this will, saying that it's good, but but you know you have the butt right. So go watch them and see. But um, yeah, it, it as far as quality goes of this uh, series here, the DD series. Now, you know, of course, obviously I'm in the DD series of the topic. I wouldn't suggest uh, getting this wheel. Actually, first of all, what I would suggest is that you get away from console racing altogether. Um, and I'll give you a story. Back in the day, when I had a uh, Fanatic, love Fanatic. I've been using Fanatic stuff forever. And uh, uh, but it's an ecosystem that you get stuck in. And so one year, Sony decided that uh, a PS3 wheel wouldn't work for the PS4 when it came out. Well, I was already invested in the PS3 wheel. Why did I want to go spend the money on a PS4 just to play the PlayStation games when I, when I already had one that covered it on PS3? So that ticked me off. I'm like, man, Sony's screwing people, you know? And then so Fnatic had, at the time, you probably don't remember, but, um, you know, it would, it would lightly say play, PlayStation compatible, but it didn't say 4. <laughs> or, but it said three, and you're like, well, hell, does that mean four? You say PlayStation compatible. So there's a little bit of a guessing game there. And uh, so that, that irked me as well, too. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm selling all my Fanatic stuff. I'm not going to mess with uh, consoles, and I'm just going to go strictly to PC, which is what I've done ever since the launch of a PS4, right? And uh, never really looked back. I, mean, I have loved to play uh, Gran Turismo and stuff, and I did. I bought a Thrustmaster TGT2 to do a review on the channel, which I'm not an affiliate for Thrustmaster, but that's something I was genuinely interested in. I wanted to dabble in it, so I did, uh, and gave a review, and then end up selling the product, you know, like after a year of use. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's not worth uh, really your money, and, and you can listen to the other reviewers as well. If you're buying a setup, a $1,300 setup, just to play. A PlayStation game uh, it's kind of you can justify it all you want it's fine to do nothing wrong with it. it's your money spend your money the way you want to but uh, this is you're missing out on some of the resolution that this wheel it can give you or this uh, wheelbase can give you off of consoles consoles you know only have a certain frequency they can promote to you which meaning if you're to play ACC on PC and you're playing on PlayStation or Xbox the the uh, finite the the feeling of the curb effects of the rumble effects of the of the tele telemetry that's coming through is going to be so much finer at a higher resolution on pc than it will be on a console just because of the way consoles are right uh the upside is that consoles generally always work and pcs you got to sometimes screw around with because some some driver didn't load or or <laughs> you got to reboot your your pc for whatever reasons and Sometimes that happens on consoles, but not near as much as it does on, on a PC. So there's a yin and yang, right? So, but uh, yeah, I would suggest you start migrating off of consoles and sticking more to PCs. Now, this Extreme is a great example for someone that wants to go dabbling into the PlayStation arena. Like me, I like to play Gran Turismo, but I don't have a wheel for it. But if I did, I, this would be something uh, that I would consider, right? The uh, Extreme 
wheel. But I probably, I don't know if I would actually buy that extreme wheel itself because uh, it doesn't seem too high quality for $300 for the wheel. I'd rather get something, a different wheel. Uh, and I would, I would suggest, here's a wheel I would suggest to you that, that I know holds up really well uh, for high torques because I've used it on my AccuForce. And that is this one right here, the CSL Elite GT3 V2 for 200 bucks. I would highly suggest this wheel over, over that extreme wheel package, right? So get the DD, get this wheel. Uh, and this will enable you to actually play on Xbox if you wanted to, if you had an Xbox. I have an Xbox and a PlayStation, uh, but I, I don't play Xbox games <laughs> on, on the Xbox. I play them on PC because Microsoft is, is uh, smart enough to actually port their games over to PC, their high, their high uh, games, like their racing games over to PC, uh, like Forza. So I play, play them on, uh, on PC anyway. So I don't really have a use for that, but this would be the smart thing to do, right? And um, yeah. That's what I would suggest to do, not to get that that extreme package, right? Um, but there's also another thing with the extreme package. You'll notice that the QR system on there, uh, it's the light wheel. Now the light wheel, and, and the other reviewers I mentioned here, and, and mentioned this as well, is a QR2 light adapter for 60 bucks. So you're getting a $60 adapter and, and a, uh, a wheel basically. So for $300 more, you get an adapter and a wheel. So basically 50 bucks for the adapter or 60 bucks for the back let's say 50 to make the math easier right and then 200 for the wheel <laughs> or 250 for the wheel um this is promoted as only good, being good for eight newton meters but now all of a sudden it's good for 15 newton meters why is that someone's lying right so well they said they tested it and blah 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 it's good i guarantee you well i don't guarantee anything but i would as a customer as a, a logical thinking person I would be like, hmm, this thing's gonna fail eventually, just like some of the QR1 uh, problems they had in the past. So this is a, a cash grab to me. This is to save some money on profits. Maybe they intended for the QR2 system in the beginning, but now they're already losing their losing uh, some uh, market value actually uh, because of this fiasco, and then also uh, losing money. So maybe they supplemented it with a QR2 light to help recoup some of that money loss that they're having, but. All in all, a QR2 uh, wheel side one here, the non-light, the regular metal one, would be the one you would need for it. Unless they lied in the very beginning and said, no, you got to have the QR2 for anything that's 8 newton meters. You can have this, the, the aluminum one. Sure, you can have it, but you don't need it. So, you see the wish-washiness here going on? So, that's something that's not answered yet on Fanatic, and who knows if it ever will be, but I think customers that are buying products at this level of expense are smart enough to understand what's going on. But keep that in mind. <clears throat> I wouldn't buy <laughs> uh, that wheelbase just because it has the QR2 light on it and the quality of it is not all that great. It's uh, creaking and cracking from the reviews I've seen. But yeah, to each their own. I think the display on it is, is kick ass. I like the display on here and I like having a functional GT7 wheel that each button for PlayStation Gran Turismo 7 works accordingly. I know on my Thrustmaster I had that wheel and it was just easier because you know which button did what in the game. But when I switched over to a different uh, connecting wheel, Sparkle one that I put on there, I had to kind of remember like what button did what in the PlayStation. So there are some advantages of that, but it's not hard to get used to, right? You got a brain, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, but yeah. I would just get the base. If you're deciding to do this, I would just get the base. Now, if you do want to get the uh, the extreme, <laughs> if you're in the U.S., you can, of course, come over to the U.S., Canada using my link. And uh, it's in stock. It's ready to ship. This is the only time I would actually suggest you buy it. If you're generally interested in, in the U.S., this is ready to ship. So you're probably getting about, I would expect, a couple weeks. But now, if you have a problem with your product, keep in mind that... You will go into that roster of emails that they can't keep up with as it is. And uh, so you may be down for a while. Uh, I, I would suggest that you don't buy any of these products uh, until about Christmas of this year uh, when they get their shit together. Okay. <laughs> That's just my opinion. And then, uh, of course, use my links, right? Don't use anybody else's links but mine. No, I'm kidding. I don't really care if you use mine or not. But uh, yeah, I would wait until, until Christmas, or at least the minimum midsummer before this good this uh clears out and they got inventory and i would bet you dollars for donuts that this is price is going to drop because the demand goes down 
And so again, that's why I say never pre-order anything, only buy when it's ready to ship. If there's no incentive for you to pre-order, meaning that you get a discount for doing it, don't do it before you keep the power in your own hands. Wait till it's actually in stock to ship. Cause even then you're going to wait two weeks for it. Sometimes you get stuff in a week, but uh, a lot of times with, uh, with uh, Fanatic products, uh, you, you'll get them in two weeks. It's not Amazon. It's not like second day delivery, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, alternatives for, for uh, GT7. If you're sold on getting the GT7, I myself love the Gran Turismo 7, really enjoy it. Actually, the D-Box that I use actually works for GT7. Uh, not as well as, as, say, Forza, but it does work, which makes me really want to have a, a Gran Turismo or PlayStation wheel because I want to get holding on to a wheel and have fun with Gran Turismo 7 with the motion and I don't really necessarily need the haptic motors in the wheel itself because I'm picking them all up in my motion rig. So any kind of wheel would work pretty good. Not a Logitech uh, 923 or something like that. I, I wouldn't be happy with that because it's, it's cog and it's cogging too much cogging and roughness in the steering. It'd have to be a direct drive wheel, but just to have the immersion of it. So, but if you are looking for alternatives, Thrustmaster TGT2 is a great alternative. Uh, I wouldn't buy it. I would buy just the wheel itself and and the uh, T T3 M pedals uh, with MC. Dude, where is my let's see platform PS5? Booyah! Where are you at? T GT2. <clears throat> I would get this one, $7.99 for that. Uh, if you wanted to get the whole kit and caboodle, right? Pedals and everything, one stop shop, and you're done. It works awesome. Uh, it really does work awesome. If you listen to any of the reviewers and stuff, uh, like uh, Will and, and, and um, I forgot the gentleman's name, a random call sign, but when you listen to them, they're all knocking it down to 8 newton meters anyway. Well, that's what this puts out is 8 newton meters uh, at the max. Now, 8 newton meters on a direct drive wheel is going to be much smoother than it is with a uh, belt driven wheel that this is. Okay, so keep that in mind. But with the haptic system that the TGT2 has in it, it actually helps quite a bit. Now this would be entry level for me, if you a recommendation for you if you wanted to get into playing Gran Turismo 7 as an alternative. Now I don't have any affiliate links for this, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I, I would probably get the 699 version here if you were interested in that wheel. And if not, I would just buy the base itself, which they sell somewhere in here, TGG servo unit right here. If you don't like the stock wheel, which I didn't, uh, I mean, I did, but I, I didn't, I'd rather have an Alcantara wheel. I would just get the 499 GT2 servo here, the wheelbase itself, and then pick a wheel you like, like this, this R383. I actually had the D-shaped wheel, which I don't see it here. It wasn't that one. That was a sparkle one. I don't see it on their, on their site right now, but anyway, I would get that and the T LCM pedals. Those are vastly improved over the uh, T3PM pedals that would come in the kit, right? So uh, yeah, get the T uh, LCM pedals, 250 for those. And then you got the wheelbase. So you're five, six, seven, fifty into that, which is, you still need a rim. Still $50 cheaper here. So it gives you another $50 for a rim. Hmm, what can you get for that? You're gonna spend more than $50 for a rim. Let's just say, where's the cheapest rim here you can get? I don't see it. It's a very cheap one. Maybe you can get the. Uh, this one actually work would would good here too. This 179 one. Any of these 179 dollar rims, much nicer rim anyways. Uh, you have a lot more fun with that in in uh, Gran Turismo. So that'd be my suggestion. Yeah, you're gonna spend a little bit more for the rim, but you're gonna get a much better setup uh, with that. Now. Uh, another alternative would be the Logitech Pro Wheel, uh, and I think uh, for the PlayStation setup, it's ready. To, it's in stock, ready to ship. And you can add pedals, but it's nine ninety nine. But what you see here is it ends up getting discounted. And uh, I will click that off to add these Pro pedals as well. So you're at twelve eighty one. Uh, so you end up knocking the the. You get a discount for the wheel itself by fifty bucks. Oh, you can't see it, can you? Let me see. There you go. You get, the, you get the discount of the wheel for 50 bucks off, and then the, uh, the, the pedals go down to 331, so just a little bit off, you know, 10, uh, 31, 41, uh, 15 bucks off for the pedals itself. And then you can use the code BOOSTED from Boosted Media and knock some more off, all right? I think it's 5% or something like that off, so check out his codes as well. But yeah, that, that's a pretty good deal. 
Uh, now this one's going to have the true true force, right? So you're going to get all the same vibrations that you get from the Thrustmaster, but it's going to be direct drive. This myself would be the ultimate one to get if you're just into console racing uh, and just you dabble into PC, right? This would be the one uh, one to get. But even even at this, it's still going to be overkill. Even I see that people running this this pro are talking about they're running it down to eight new meters. Now I haven't tried this wheel. If I get one in to review, in other words, if I go spend my own money to buy one because I am curious about this, uh, I'll let you know. You know, if these people are just very weak armed, and eight new meters is is just you know super light for me, but uh, but good and heavy for them. But I get what they're saying. You don't want to have too much force, and you want to keep the fidelity, and that's what I like. I like the fidelity. Uh, the edge of grip in a corner uh, so yeah maybe eight new meters is good and you still have some overhead for the spikes when you hit the curbing and stuff so but yeah this would be a good good alternative to that so basically you got three players you got logitech thrustmaster and fanatic for the gran turismo 7 gran turismo games or playstation games rather that is right uh, those are your three choices so pick your ecosystem the way you want to uh, but you will get pigeonholed in all of them Logic Tech has this downsize because they don't have a shifter uh, and it doesn't have um, extra wheels yet. They're going to come out with them, I'm sure, eventually. And then Thrustmaster, they don't have a T818 uh, direct drive for places compatible, which they say they're going to come out with it eventually. But who knows? They're like polyphony. You know, it takes you know 20 years to get a new game out of them, right? So <laughs> that's, again, another reason why I don't stick with console-based games because they take too long to produce. Uh, but, yeah, move over to PC. Is what I suggest. But if you want uh, PlayStation compatible, those are your three choices. And then obviously uh, the DD Extreme is ready to ship in the U.S. if you want that. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to give you a little bit of an insight of affiliate marketing and uh, what was kind of my opinion of what kind of on with with a fanatic fiasco and uh, and some alternatives to you. So if you find value in this review, please comment below. Sorry if I rambled on a little bit, but it was kind of quite a bit to cover and say to you. Uh, to get the point across and uh, help you make an informed decision uh, next time. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the track. I'm out.